Hi, and welcome back to DevExplaining channel. Today I wanted to share with you uh, a little bit of uh, machine learning in form of uh, natural language processing using Stanford Core NLP library. Uh, today I'm showing you a demo with Java because I felt like coding a little bit of Java. And as always, any things I show you, uh, you will find the link to my GitHub repository below the video. So let's get started. Stanford Core NLP library is a pretty kind of a serious and heavyweight library. It can do many, many things. And it also has bindings for more languages than just Java. But I decided to do a little bit of Java today. Uh, so you can get Core NLP from GitHub or you can use Maven to do it. And today I'm using Maven because it's a nifty way to handle the dependencies. There is a little bit of love and hate relationship going on with it, but let's stick to Maven today. So what you need to get started if you want to download the code yourself, uh, I'm going to use Java 17 today. It's the latest stable Java platform right now, and I enjoy using it. So I will show you some tricks you can do by combining latest Java with a little bit older library in this case. And I'm using Maven for dependency management. So obviously to run any of the code, you would need to, to have the same thing. Okay. So my question for today uh, that I'm asking is, uh, how about my YouTube channel comments? Am I able to find uh, negative comments and separate them so I could learn and be better? Or am I able to find positive comments and use them to energize myself for more videos like this? So let's, uh, let's study that question a little bit further. I have ran a, a Python tool uh, that's also included here, but that's not the main point today. It's very straightforward little tool that's using uh, YouTube API. Um, in my case, I need to have API key that I have created to access my channel. So it might not be very useful for you and it's extremely straightforward. But I ran the tool and I ended up with a lot of comments. I have cleansed the comments so they don't contain HTML uh, code and, and it's just a bunch of text, wall of text and sentences uh, of various kinds. This is all comments for all my videos, by the way, including it in my GitHub repository. So if you want to see a sample, uh, you can take a look as well. But I would like to kind of find some shape into this one, figure out what's negative, what's positive. And I can do that with Stanford uh, Core NLP library. So next uh, step uh, using Maven, I have a minimal Maven POM file here defining my application. And as I mentioned, I'm using Java 17. So it's visible here all the way. Um, kind of the interesting dependencies are these ones. So I have the Stanford Core NLP dependency. I'm also loading models for it so that we get the heavyweight stuff there. And uh, finally, I'm adding a little bit of logging to, to get a nice, a nice output out of, out of there. Other stuff is just your ordinary latest versions of the testing libraries available. Good. So all my code that I want to demonstrate today is in this one file app up Java. And you can, of course, get it and play with it yourself. But let me show you some things. So let's start very simple. Uh, Java is not the best uh, kind of easiest language to load files and play with files. So I have abstracted uh, loading the comments file from the class path so that it works all uh, like running from here or running from a jar file. So both ways are supported. I'm loading simply the file and returning it as a string. I'm uh, butchering any uh, exception handling and resource closing. So this is just a proof of concept, not a refined product, mind you. Um, throwing all the exceptions out here. So just minimal bit of code to demonstrate some concepts. But I end up having loaded text from a file. That's kind of the beef. So I'm, I, I have three steps here to share. Step number one is to demonstrate the simple API that's ac actually quite fast and not so heavyweight, uh, but also quite limited. So let's tokenize the text to start out with. Um, using the simple API, I'm just loading the text in a document. And then uh, from there, I have very simple API to process through all the sentences. And for each sentence, I'm tokenizing the words and, and uh, printing out the output. So let's 
run this one. And as you can see, lightning fast, it just loaded the text, uh, broke it to sentences, broke sentences to words, and here we go. So this is already a little bit useful. We could find interesting words and, and do some kind of frequency analysis based on those um, kind of uh, good stuff, but not, not the real core of what I, what I will show you today. It's not very useful for me, so let's move onwards. So uh, from the simple API, we move on to kind of uh, the actual Stanford API that's a little bit more interesting. And that's a pipeline API. So we have Stanford Core NLP object and I can create it giving a little bit of annotators and that creates a pipeline. Uh, through the pipeline, I'm, I'm able to process my textual content. And then from the content, I'm left with kind of a set of annotations. And then I'm able to get different parts of that and then process them. So I end up having a list that I can process. And from each sentence, I can get some insights like, like here I'm getting the sentence uh, as a sentiment integer. So a numeric value telling uh, from, from one, that would be most negative one, uh, upwards, uh, onwards, until we get the most positive one. So we have a range of different sentiments uh, based on how Stanford is analyzing the, the uh, text. By the way, different languages are supported. Today I'm using English, but there's a few more that are supported. The most common languages are supported nicely. So uh, then uh, another thing, I'm grabbing the sentiment name, mostly positive or negative. So that's uh, a little bit rougher, but easy, easy to understand uh, shortcut. And finally, I'm grabbing the sen sentence text. So what was the original one? So let's output these ones. And as you can see, now the things get a little bit slower. So when I run the application again, it starts and then it stops here. It's loading the uh, model for the, for the kind of pipeline. And this is because pipeline includes the sentiment analysis. So we need to do a little bit heavier uh, downloading. And uh, just wanted to point out that this part of the library eats a lo lot of memory. We are talking about gigabytes. And uh, the jar file, if, if you package things to a jar file, and the out, out, output kind of size goes also up. So we have half a gigabyte jar file if I include all these libraries in. So just to point out that this is not the uh, most lightweight stuff, what you want to be doing is typically load the library once and then just use it. After it's loaded, it's very easy and faster to use. But the loading part is where it takes time. So we got uh, some sentences. That video is useless negative. I think Stanford got it right. Uh, I already have Python installed using the Anaconda route on my Windows 10. Neutral makes sense. Thanks, uh, neutral. Well, probably it's more like positive, but Stanford didn't catch it based on the one sentence. And then let's see some positive ones. Here is positive uh, three. Great video. Thanks for the comment. These comments keep me alive. By the way, remember to click those buttons uh, beneath the video and drop the comments if you like or have some constructive criticism. First of all, that's very welcome. And secondly, that feedback cycle is what keeps me going and what keeps me cranking more videos. So drop great comments, drop constructive comments, what you like, click the buttons, share the videos. That's, uh, that's kind of fuel for my system. Here is very positive level four. I think that's the highest it can go. And Stanford caught that really well. Very nice, right? Now, I have one final thing I wanted to show to you. So when I started uh, studying this library, it felt a little bit dated. Its, uh, it's uh, origins are way back and you can see it. So it's, it's not, you can run it in Java 17 like I just did, but it's the API is not quite there. It's a bit kind of clumsy and complicated. So what I like to do is if I wanted to take this one step onwards and create an application out of this, then I would wrap things uh, beneath a little bit nicer Java 17 level API. So let's, let's study that idea. So I have a new function here and the purpose of this function is not 
to simply print out and use the API but hide the complexity be below. So I'm passing in the content and I'm, I'm getting out a list of sentiment records. You know my love for records if you have seen other videos on my channel. Records are awesome. So I have created a sentiment record that's consisting of sentiment name, sentiment value and original sentence. Very, uh, just what I need, very lightweight. Automatically I got the getters. It's immutable, so I don't need the setters. Um, it's got the equals hash code to string functions created. It's got constructor created with minimal amount of code. So very, very neat. And then I have a, a mapping function here. So we dive into Java 8 level streaming API. Uh, purpose here is to make this more readable. So I'm saying... Uh, Let's map each sentence annotation that I'm getting uh, using my little function here. So I'm getting a core map and then I'm using a little bit of Java code to create a sentiment record out of the important values, right? On top of that, I can then add filtering. So negative comments might be sometimes very good to help me grow my channel because uh, there might be constructive criticism, so might be interesting to uh, filter in the negative comments and focus on those. Perhaps I could create a bot that would notify me when new uh, negative comments pop up. Perhaps I could apply some more NLP, kind of try to filter good negatives from, from trash negatives, right? On the other hand, positive comments keep me going. They motivate me to do more videos. Those are also very important. So some days I might just want to filter out everything else and just enjoy the positive comments. So either way, I could use the core API to do this, collect things to list. And then in here, I'm just printing out the list. But obviously I could easily now build stuff on top of this. And remember all the code is shared in, in the GitHub. So if you like, you can grab my code and build something awesome on top of that. And by the way, if you do give me a heads up, I love to hear some feedback and give, me, give my GitHub repository stars. That's also a form of awesome uh, feedback if you find this useful. Now, unfortunately, this takes a little bit of time. So uh, I think I will do some clever editing magic and cut, compress the time here a little bit. Okay, so uh, we, we finished the processing. Mostly we finished loading of the model and creating the pipeline, and then we processed a bunch of lines and uh, because of my filtering, this is my good day. This is my kind of happy, happiness feedback loop. So I'm only getting good feedback based on the Stanford analysis. There can be sometimes some things that sneak up, uh, sneak up uh, through the analysis. It's not 100% perfect. By the way, you can train it to be more perfect. So obviously I'm just using the basic default uh, model libraries, but there is uh, mechanisms to train it to be more clever. Okay, so I'm getting pretty positive feedback here, uh, good stuff. Um, there is some, some stuff that this might uh, not be, uh, actually, I don't think this is extremely positive. This is very constructive and good practical idea. But then mo mostly, most of these are pretty positive ones. So it's, it's doing good, good stuff uh, recognizing those ones. So finally, let's wrap things up and dwell on the negative ones for just a bit. I will activate this for the final run and uh, again because it takes time here i will do some editing magic so you don't need to wait okay so here is the final wrap up of a neg just the negative comments nicely filtered and mapped to nice uh, kind of data model that i could use to build something useful um, do you know that YouTube has recently got a wave of uh, pretty nasty exploits in the comment section. So some big time YouTubers are um, suffering. People are creating fake profiles that look like theirs. And then they are asking uh, other people to send money or cryptos or something like that. Uh, fortunately, my channel is uh, relatively small yet, so I'm not suffering from that. But if I would any day, I could probably take the sentiment analysis and add a little bit more logic on top of that and try to detect those attacks. Uh, I think I should be able to do that. Might be interesting. So uh, anyways, uh, you can see the negative uh, values here. Here is one um, pretty clear, pretty negative, not very constructive necessarily. It might be that the video was trash. 
I should probably check it. Uh, and uh, then we get something here. I actually don't think these were negative ones, but somehow Stanford thought they were. Perhaps there was a bit uh, <laughs> kind of that kind of tone, but pretty good. Here is very lengthy feedback. I read it as actually pretty positive. Stanford is thinking that it's negative, so it's kind of uh, missing a few of these. That's typically the case if you don't have a particularly uh, kind of tailored model that you are using. I'm just using the general model, but I think I'm getting more good hits than the bad ones. So definitely a good kind of processor that I could use. And I think that's it for this week's video. As mentioned, do keep that feedback loop hot. Uh, drop comments, uh, push those buttons, share the video. That That's always very helpful for me. I hope this week's video was uh, interesting for you. I'm always aiming for like two or three things here. The one is uh, education, uh, showing little snippets on how to get started with something cool. Second is giving you inspiration and ideas because I'm always trying to find new things to use clever tools and libraries to do some fun new things. So if I gave you some seed of inspiration, that might be very valuable. Keep it alive and, and dive into it, perhaps. And thirdly, uh, if you do, did find something uh, practical and useful right now, uh, I always share my code in GitHub. So it's very easy to grab it for you, tailor it and do what you need to do with it, but get started very rapidly. You could, of course, just go to Stanford library page. They have pretty good documentation. You can al always just use the tool from command line. You don't actually need any POM or Java 17, any Maven included. You can just whip it out and start using it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.